Ha! They thought I forgot. They thought something was gone. They thought I lost it, but I didn't lose it. It comes here. It's finally back. I am going to do it. And what am I talking about? I'm actually talking about the King Tyrannosaur, guys. So finally going to get that sucker done. Uh, after having that thing modeled for so long, we're finally going to get that thing started. So um, let's get right to it. All right, guys, so it's another week. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done a uh, video, uh, but this one we're going to actually be bringing a prop that a lot of guys have been asking for because it's, it's been on my Instagram for a long time. It's the King Tyranno Sword. Uh, I've had this model in Fusion 360 for a long time. I've never done any type of modeling ever, guys, so this is like the first prop I ever mo 3D modeled, and I used Fusion 360s. Uh, I wanted to do something because a lot of people have been asking me, when am I going to make this? When am I going to make this? When am I going to make this? When, 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 when? I finally decided I'm going to do it. Uh, a lot of people sent me their requests uh, for on Instagram, on Twitter, on my YouTube channel on the comments. So I decided to finally make it. So that's what we're going to do today. Right now, uh, I'm doing a little something different with the video, you know, instead of the go through and a lot of time lapses because you guys get a lot of time lapses and I don't know if you guys get a little bit bored with that. Uh, so what we're going to do is you're going to see me going about what I'm doing, getting all the stuff, going to Walmart and everything like that. You know, it's basically like a vlog, not just a tutorial, uh, because a lot of the things that you guys have seen, I've showed you already step by step. Uh, for example, the helmet. So you can actually see it in the card right up here. You can actually see it in the card right up here. A little, little, little card. Uh, just click on that if you want, actually want to see videos of how I made helmets. How I installed visors, how I did chroming techniques, so you can actually go there and check out the videos. And remember, when you go check out the video, remember sure to hit that like button, guys. Remember to hit that like button because I appreciate it, and YouTube knows that you guys are interested in the video. Uh, so right now, we're just going to move into the next part of the video, and you guys are going to see me going into the Walmart and doing all the other stuff. And remember... Uh, leave some comments down below of what other stuff you're going to be seeing because I'm going to be doing some other props, uh, especially going to be working on the Pepper Potts Rescue Armor. I'm doing a 3D print of that, but instead of painting it, we're going to be doing some vinyl wrapping on it. We're going to do some vinyl wrap, so I'm going to show you guys how that goes and uh, see what we're going to do. So, And maybe have somebody model a suit for me so because i'm not gonna wear that suit not gonna no i'm not gonna I'm, i wouldn't fit into that i don't have a girlish figure so i'm not i'm not that beautiful let's go right into that part of the video So we got some paint and we ended up getting a little bit of clear coat. Uh, basically that's all I needed for this prop, but I ended up picking up a few extra things that I felt like I really needed. Built a PC for the first time in 10 years. Uh, you know, that way I can do some 3D modeling and be able to, you know, learn and progress a little bit more in this 3D prop building world, you know? And also, I did pick up a little bit of some LED lights. I, I don't know. It, it, it was at a good price. It was like five dollars. I was like, let me just go get that, and and bling out a little bit of the tower. I don't know. You know, it just I, I see a lot of PCs that that way, and I really want to do the same thing. Uh, but yeah, you know, it was a good day. You know, came to pick up some paints and found these other things that I really really needed. Um, so right now, we're just gonna go home, uh, wait till the print is done. 24 hours later. Alright guys, so I'm recording here but somebody in the staff told me I can't record inside the store so I'm just letting you guys know right now that I'm just going to go pick up the paint right now and maybe a few other things and then we're going to head over to the hobby shop. Maybe they'll let me record inside there but uh, who, who, who really knows? Let's see what happens. So I'll see you guys back in the car. Alright guys, so we got the paint, we have the high gloss white that we're going to be using for the blade of this um, prop. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't record in it. They said it was probably going to make the other customers feel uncomfortable because they don't get a lot of vloggers around here, people recording videos of while they're shopping and everything. So it's a, it's a kind of a thing that you don't see a lot here where I live. Uh, so it kind of gets a little nerve wracking or a little embarrassing sometimes when they stop you and tell you you can't do this, you can't do that. 
Uh, so right now we're gonna go into the hobby shop that's actually a little bit down the road right now and see if we can find some red and some gold airbrush paint. Um, maybe it'll be a lot better than what I used before because um, I don't know. I've never used airbrush paint ever in my life so this is gonna be the first time I've ever used it I'm gonna put some use to this machine that one of the fans got me Alright guys, so I just picked these two things up, uh, some kind of Aztec gold and some race car red. Uh, so I think these will be the two colors that we'll be using for the body and the handle and the hilt of the, um, the King Tyranno sword. Uh, hopefully it'll come out nice. I really never have any experience with this, so we'll experience it together! Alright guys, so we're back into this little work area that I have. I know it's still a mess in the background because it's storm season, I better to leave everything down instead of having it up and then having to take it down again just in case a hurricane does come by the island. So better to be safe than sorry. Uh, I know it's a mess. Uh, bear with me. Uh, just I hope you guys don't hold it against me that there's a, there's a mess behind me. But anyway, what we're going to be working on today is we're going to make this puzzle of a sword into one pole sword. Uh, so basically we have it here. To print it on the CR-10, I actually had it printed out in several different sections. The blade alone is actually in three separate sections. Um, what I'm going to do is sand them all separate and then apply some epoxy to glue them all together. Uh, maybe use a clamp or some Gorilla Tape to actually uh, hold the piece together as the epoxy sets. And then we're going to be sanding a lot of these areas. Mostly the only place, the only piece I think that's not going to use a lot of spot putty is actually going to be the base because it does have some detail and they're not going to be able to get into these crevices with the spot putty. So what we're going to do is some filler primer, try to sand it out as smooth as possible and then add some other filler primer and hopefully uh, some of the lacquer will actually thin it out a little bit more and keep a lot of the detail because that's what we want because this thing has so much detail in it on the bottom. I don't want to lose any of that at all whatsoever because devil is in the detail. So basically what we're going to do first is we're actually going to take our, we're going to take some sandpaper right here. This is actually a sandpaper that I got in the mail from one of my subscribers. It's actually a sandpaper set and 24, 24 things come into it. You can probably use it for my palm sander but since it's right here we're actually going to sand it by hand because it, it's a lot better sanding it by hand than actually sanding it. So we're going to look to see which kind we need. I think what we're going to do is Maybe some 150, 100 grit, 80 grit. 80 grit will be good to start with also. And then we actually have some paper for some wet sanding. So this, that'll come in handy for some wet sanding because I do do a lot of wet sanding in this. Uh, so yeah, that's what we have right here. That's what we're going to start off with. All right guys, so what, one of the first things that we're going to try is to sand the blade section up. Try to get it nice and smooth. Try to avoid uh, removing some of that detail that's actually in the blade as you can see right here in the video. Uh, it does have like an engraving type of detail. So we're going to do a few passes here and hopefully we don't kind of remove it. I was trying to use the grit sandpaper that came from one of my fans, uh, but in the process of actually using that grit, the grit was starting to come out and I found out that it was actually meant for sanding wood. Uh, so I had to go back to the original sandpaper that I used to use, which is actually meant for, you know, sanding Bondo for automotive cars and everything. And I had to be very careful, especially around the blade section. Uh, the higher it got to the tip, the, the, more, the more delicate it is. So I had to be very careful not to put uh, too much pressure on that in order to break it because uh, the last thing we need is to actually break the blade. After that, I ended up going into the base area where it has all the detail. Uh, the section where it's actually the, the part of the Zeo staff and it has a lot of detail in it and some crevices and bevels that it's kind of hard to get in with your fingers and a machine. So uh, I try to get it as much as possible without any, removing any of the detail that's actually on the front and the back of it. So I added some filler primer and some spot filler uh, in order to get into those grooves that I couldn't reach to smooth it out entirely. And um, it kind of worked out for the best. All right, so what we're gonna do here is just give a little nice light spritz uh, filler primer two and one. A lot of these sections I could not sand completely smooth, so we're gonna fill it with some filler primer. 
and then add some spot putty after. Two days later. All right, guys. It's been a few days. It's taken a while because the weather hasn't been the best part. So I so I managed to do some filler primer, some spot putty, some sanding, on and off, on and off, until I can get it nice and smooth. And then I added some. I hit it with some filler primer. So right now what we're gonna do is do a little, little wet sanding, a little wet sanding, and see if we can find any imperfections. If there are any, if there are any imperfections, then we're going to go back and do a little bit more spot putty. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna be losing a little bit of the detail of the engraving in it, but I do have a way of trying to bring it back. Maybe uh, make a stencil and airbrush it in with a darker color gray. Make that area pop a little. Bit. But, you know just so we can see, still see the detail so we're gonna take the blade right now we, ha we still have it in several different pieces we're gonna sand it nice and smooth as possible and then after everything's nice and smooth then we're gonna put them together with some epoxy and hopefully after that cover the seam lines around it so that way we can mold it after because I, I am planning on molding the whole prop just so we can see how it looks because I think it's a lot better to mold it in some smooth cast because part of this is very very thin so a lot of props when they get a little thinner they get a little bit more weak um, with 3d printing so so we're gonna make a mold we're gonna do some casting but that's gonna be in a whole entire different video all right guys so we finally have everything smooth out as much as possible what we're gonna do now is take our epoxy or plastic well epoxy and we're gonna actually put these pieces one by one together until it's all nice and, and uniform. So what I basically did before adding the epoxy, what I did was sand each end on the bottom because I wanted to make sure it, had, it wasn't smooth. I wanted to make sure it had some type of grip, grip uh, type of bite into it. So when the plastic well hit, hits and then touches the other section, they will actually adhere. And then what I'm gonna do, since I don't wanna actually put clamps on it because I don't wanna break the plastic, what we're going to do is take some of our Gorilla Tape, wrap it around the section where it's sealed and wait till it dries until it's completely into like one cohesive piece, alright? Alright guys, so we finally have everything put together with the epoxy. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just basically put some more spot filler around the areas where the seal is. As you can see right here, we have some of these areas still need some little spot putty just to seal them together. That way we can do the mold later. Um, but first, we're just going to paint this sucker after and do a little bit more work. More work, more work. So, bear with me guys, bear with me. All right guys, as you can see, we actually have everything glued together with the epoxy. This is not gonna be the final product because what we're gonna do after this is that we're going to do is put a high gloss on some of the areas where it's gonna be metal. So we wanna make that, give it that chrome look like I did with the Spider-Man helmet. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do right now is add a little bit of the graphite powder onto the blade and onto the base area and then give it a nice buff. Uh, try to get it as shiny as possible to give it that nice chrome dark look that the graphite does. Uh, just to see how everything turns out. Maybe we'll get to see a little bit of the detail that's actually here that's uh, still remaining. It's a little soft at this moment. You really can't see it in the white. Maybe when we do the, the graphite onto this, it'll give it a little bit more of an appeal, more of a look. Um, I'll end up covering this a little bit with also the graphite, but then I'll be painting over this again with some red. Uh, just to give it that nice contrast of detail that, that I don't want it to combine this area with this to make it all look uh, metal. Alright, so we finally have come to the paint. So right now we're going to be using some hot rod red that I got at the local hobby shop. I decided to go in light coats because I didn't, I've never used a airbrush gun before. Uh, so I decided just to do the same technique I always do with the spray cans. Uh, three to four coats separately and uh, then we moved on to the gold. The gold was a very different case. It took about seven to eight separate coats to actually see the difference in the color because the gold is actually more of a metallic. Uh, clear paints in some way so it takes more coats to do it so it took a little bit extra time but in the long run it finally got to the point where it looked so nice we're finally at the home stretch we're at the time that we're going to be painting this black what I'm gonna be actually doing is painting it by hand because I need to get this diamond these diamonds all over here and the rest of the handle black and I gotta paint this little diamond piece red uh, so, but I'm gonna do that all by hand. I'm gonna do that all by hand, and then give it a nice clear coat. Hopefully, it picks up a little bit more shine and everything. Flies, guys, flies. That doesn't mean I stink. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
Uh, just gonna paint this a little bit. We're gonna go a little. We're gonna be using some of our multi-service black licorice. Black licorice, guys. So we're gonna be using this to paint this part. And I haven't even started yet, and I'm getting paint on my hands. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, when this is completely finished and painted with all the details and everything, you guys are going to absolutely love this prop. It's going to look so nice. Luckily, this black paint is actually pretty good. I've used it for, you know, detail work and everything. I've always used... Um, this folk art paint so one of the reasons I wanted to do this by hand is because the main reason is the outer lining of the diamonds had to stay gold so you know I could have airbrushed it a little bit you know and you know kept the detail and everything but the fact I managed to get it all to keep the gold and not to have not the black inside it would be a little bit tough to paint to do that so you know I wanted to just go through this you know this is just what I'm doing for right now All right, so finally got it done. We have the last bit of detail here and painted the rest of this gold. Basically, all we have to do is paint this black, but I'm actually going to paint the black last because I actually do want it more of a matte look. I don't want it super, super shiny. So, yeah, we're pretty, pretty much done. We're just going to put a, some lacquer on this. So I'm going to keep everything taped up because I just want shine lacquer on this part see if i can actually bring a little bit of the shine in the gold maybe i um do it little by little i think we're gonna i think maybe one two or maybe three coats of the lacquer uh just to seal in the paint and see if we can um get it nice and shiny you know because the shinier the better guys the shinier the better Gonna use a little bit of this. A little bit of this goes a long, long way. Very long. Got it done. It, it took a little bit of while. To took some serious time. You no, know, regardless of the fact that you know storms, you know Dorian and Karen came almost bum rushing over us over here in, the, in Puerto Rico. Uh, we actually got this completely done. It took a little while. Uh, there was a little bit of an accident. See, this is one of the reasons why I said I will not sell this as a 3D printed prop because the thinner it gets to the top. It's more fragile, so what I want to do is just make a mold of this and cast it after for a lot of other people if, in case they want a King Tyranno sword. Uh, so yeah, other, other than likely, I didn't hit, hit a lot of snags in the, in the building of this thing. I uh, had to do it in several different parts, like you guys know. Uh, I cut it from here, uh, here, here, and here, so I had to do several sections. It's being held right now with epoxy, so... It's being held good, as you guys saw. I did a little bit of swinging around with this baby, and um, it's kind of sturdy. But I would not do. I would not do a full. This is one of the reasons why I wish I had a studio instead of having to work outside. 
you hear cars coming by left and right. Uh, so yeah, you know, everything is being held with a pox blanket, but I would not swing this baby full force uh, as hard as I can because I am so worried that it'll snap here. Because remember, this, this thing is only at 15% infill. It is not a fully solid piece because if I did it fully solid, it would have taken a lot longer to print. And I do mean a lot longer. This thing already took about uh, three days to print. So the way it is, 15%, if I did it a little bit more solid, uh, maybe, we're talking maybe a week or so. And it still would have been fragile up here no matter what because it is very, very thin. So a little bit of a knock here would have done it. Would have, would just break it, which what happened? It happened, you know, I was painting it left and right, and my knee accidentally hit it on the blade, which kind of chipped it. So right now, I just glued it back together with some Loctite, which is very trusty. I, I love Loctite, using it a lot. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to cast, make a mold of this baby, cast it, and do a nice uh, resin prop. Do a nice plastic resin prop. That's I think that's the best way to go with something like this, but or at least with any kind of sword, if you're going to do a 3D printed sword and you plan on swinging it around in some way, or I would say more of a smooth cast 65D or 300 would do the trick for this thing. So as soon as I get the molding material and I get the casting material uh, in the mail, basically I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you guys, you just look for that kind of photo on my Instagram or in my Twitter. Uh, I don't really use Twitter a lot, but I'm starting to use it now a little bit more. So if you guys want to follow me there and see more pictures, in case you don't get notifications on your Instagram or something like that, uh, follow me on Twitter. It's OscarLorea39. Very easy. I'll leave a link on to my Twitter down below. So if you guys want to follow me, you can go there right now. So guys, but before and besides, before I go any further about talking about this sword, guys, don't forget to remember if you haven't subscribed yet, remember to. Make sure to hit subscribe, smash that like button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell right here. This little bell thing icon. So basically, remember, I know sometimes YouTube has been having trouble with their notifications, that people haven't been getting their notifications, but I hope that you guys do that, smash that notification button, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you already have, because I have other builds coming up, including a Pepper Post Rescue Armor from Endgame. I'm going to do a full-on series of the building of that working with vinyl wrap instead of paint. So I'm going to show you guys how the effect of vinyl wrap goes with a 3D print. If you guys want to know about that, remember, hit subscribe. That way you know when the videos of that build are be- Shut up. Make sure to watch out for those videos of the Pepper Pots Rescue Armor, guys, because that's going to be coming up soon. I already got the filament for it, so I'm ready to start printing that baby out and showing you with some vinyl wrapping instead of using some paint. Maybe I'll do some... Anybody want a dog?